Oh, one of the major features of the Magic 4 Ultimate is the almost one inch sized sensor. And the bigger the sensor, the bigger the pixels, the better in low light. So let's try it out in low light. So this is a low light shot now with 4K30 on the Magic 4 Ultimate. And yeah, let's see how good the video quality really is. And let's take some photos as well in the dark to see if this is any good. So let's get started. So this is now the main lens of the Magic 4 Ultimate, almost one inch size, one over 1.2 inch size sensor, very large sensor. One of the largest sensors, I think last time we saw it in the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. So it's a very, very good Samsung sensor, I think. And it's doing a great job here in terms of stabilization, lightening up everything. And I think the Magic 4 Ultimate is doing a little bit better than all the other smartphones when it comes to lighting up even such dark scenes here with yeah, a little bit of background light here coming from the bicycles uh, passing by and maybe the street lamps as well so what do you think about the main sensor here on the magic 4 ultimate and now just for the fun of it the xperia pro i with a one inch sized sensor so how does this compare to the almost one inch size sensor of the magic 4 ultimate i would say they're pretty pretty close this xperia may be a little bit darker because it's a little getting a little bit darker and i just recorded it like five minutes ago and the sun is settling very very fast as you can see here in the background but what do you think about the noise floor here and in general about the xperia pro i versus the magic 4 ultimate i have to say they're pretty pretty similar so i would say that uh, even the background build is a little bit better on the magic 4 ultimate the xperia pro i is still doing a good job here with its one inch sized sensor what you notice immediately on the ultra wide angle camera on the magic 4 ultimate is it's a lot darker than the main sensor and more grainy stabilization should work fine but this graininess you also see in photos so the details are lacking of course it's not so much noise in the photos because it can just calculate the noise out there but still there is some details missing there's some punch missing and if i switch to the one times zoom now you will see a big huge difference in terms of graininess and in terms of quality so this is the better video quality definitely so the ultra wide angle is not for darker conditions especially in video mode in photo mode you can get around with it but honestly if you have such a good almost one inch size sensor just use the almost one inch size sensor and zoom with your feet as much as possible the same issue you have with the zoom lens so let's take a look at the zoom lens so let's zoom in on something there in the far just like this boat there if we switch the lens now it gets a bit darker more grainy has issues with focusing and if i go closer this is 10 times zoom you can see yeah it's not quite as good can press here to try to get a focus but you can see how grainy this is and the more issues you get with this kind of zoom lens especially when it comes to the photos where you have moving subjects like i try to uh, catch a boat or ship just passing by and if it's moving around all the noise and all the computational photography stitching together multiple images from multiple sensors and then trying to get rid of the noise is not really working so we have a big issue there then of course one of the exercises where huawei is very strong traditionally and honor also because of its yeah, family ties is moon photography the moon is up in the sky so let me show you the moon there and uh, the issue i have with the moon is that i took several shots trying to get the moon into frame but it took a while for it to really work out as you can see here 10 times zoom it's not switching to a special moon uh, exposure so i have to manually expose here and then you can clearly see the moon with the zoom lens which is pretty nice 
but uh, this I had to do also with photos. Sometimes it was kicking in, sometimes other times it was not, so this is a big issue. And uh, yeah, it's nice that those cameras have this option. There we go, have these options. But on the other hand, if the AI is not kicking in, it's getting like overblown and you see it in some of the sample pictures as well but you can get away with this i think still in terms of zoom lenses the samsung galaxy s 22 ultra is a lot better than the honor magic 4 ultimate i think roughly up to 10 times zoom but this is like the same same story that we have with the huawei p50 pro and even the predecessor of the magic 4 ultimate the magic 3 pro plus so what do you think about this video and yeah, photo quality in the dark in the nighttime with the Magic 4 Ultimate. And now, just for the sake of it, the front facing camera. The cool thing about the front facing camera is that you can switch to the 0 0.8 times, you can switch to the 1 times. You can see it's a little bit grainy and noisy, but it has like the possibility to use the screen as a flashlight. So it's illuminating my face so this might be also very interesting for vlogging if you want to do some vlogging in the dark uh, anyway i think that the main lens is still better than this front facing camera even with this uh, illumination of the face it really should get too dark you can still turn on the flashlight on the magic 4 ultimate which is pretty pretty bright but so bright that if i look into it i cannot see anything anymore because i just simply um, blinded by this flashlight but in extreme dark conditions maybe this might be also a good helper to get a better photo or better video quality out of the phone and now just for the sake of it the same test with the sony xperia pro i and also the flashlight it's a bit weaker flashlight but i'm not looking into the camera otherwise i really get blind here uh, anyway it is working fine as well as you can see it's not as bright not illuminating so much so how does the xperia with its main one inch size sensor uh, perform in this situation so when this is now test in low light as you can see the camera is already seeing a little bit more and showing a little bit more than i can see this is the automatic mode turned on you can see here that we have uh, the ai turned on i can turn it off on and i will take a photo now here to see how this will look like because we have the main large sensor just taking the photo and you can see whoa <laughs> yeah this is doing some editing and you can see definitely a little bit more than what you can see here so it is doing a little bit of uh, yeah performing stuff not so much noise i have to say so this looks pretty okay and uh, yeah now we want to do also a night photography so i have to go to night there we go and now night photography let's see what it's doing so two seconds roughly exposure let's see how this photo looks like and you can see here this is even over overshot here the brightness is a little, a little bit too bright here so wow because of the one inch almost one inch size sensor is doing a little bit too much here and getting it too bright but what about the ultra wide angle in night mode can it be better you can see how really how dark this is so let's take a look also roughly two seconds photo or exposure and let's take a look at the photo itself to see i think it did a pretty good job oh you can see my fingers even in the shot pretty good job to brighten up everything is a little bit got too bright there as well again so it has some issues there let's compare it to the normal photo with the ultra wide angle This is the normal photo with the ultra wide angle and you can see a lot darker but it's lighting it everything a little bit up as you can see here it's not as sharp let's compare this to this very very similar you can see a little bit brighter maybe on the night shot photo otherwise it's almost the same we can do the same thing with the tele zoom lens three and a half times so let's take a look here main shot it's a little bit more light there so should be a bit brighter as you can see here pretty good i can see stuff here inside of this classroom 
of this uh, school or kindergarten or whatever it is and uh, yeah pretty okay let's take a look at the night mode three and a half times and again two seconds exposure and let's see the result pretty much the same there we got a little bit better white balance i would say at least it looks a little bit white more white let's take a look at the scene it's more yellowish this is just way too yellowish so not sure what's wrong there so we have this illness of too yellowish on the magic four ultimate again let's go in seven times let's see how this performs in normal photo mode and here you can see you are restoring some details still good photo and in night mode as well so night mode we can go 10 times even not only seven times let's go seven times I'm not sure why there we go and two seconds exposure yes it's a fixed rate that it uses here and let's take a look at the photo yeah again the yellow tint not much added detail i would say i even prefer the automatic one even if it's like a bit over sharpening here we have a little bit darker less noise i think yeah but overall pretty similar what do you think Paul, what do you think about the Magic 4 Ultimate in nighttime photography? Yeah, granted, I did not check any daylight photography, but I did so many daylight photos and videos already that there will be a daylight video review coming as well. But I wanted to get this uh, nighttime video review out as quick as possible. So what do you think about this? Write it down in the comment section. This is everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.